three, two, one. Hey guys, my name is Ben. You're watching Upcountry Electric. We've got a trouble call today. Uh, customer has got a transfer pump running on a VFD. The VFD's touchscreen failed recently and they lost power to a water meter there and they used to see a small LED light on but they don't see that on anymore and they want us to come and just verify that everything's working or what's broken. We have a new touchscreen on the way, new HMI for the VFD, but it hasn't arrived yet. So we'll head there, do some basic voltage checks, see that everything's working aside from the touchscreen and make sure that uh, it's all all right. I'm a little worried they just had a bunch of rain and the operator thinks there might be some water inside the VFD. Uh, if that's the case, could be in more trouble than just a touchscreen. So we'll try and do some checks and make sure that the VFD is operational. All right, see you there. Yeah, this isn't good, man, that that's open. It, maybe water couldn't get in there, but yeah, having this broken off, not good. That's what I was, uh, and that's to, uh, and that's what's coming is a new one of these and a new one of these. And no power light there. That is not a good sign. It's, yeah, it's always uh, impressive to see what UV damage will do. You know, solar solar radiation. What that'll do to these. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you think it was the sun in combination with somebody not knowing how to open it is what well, broke that, it? That's how that got broken. Yeah. And then uh, gecko poop. That's not good. Okay, there's no line in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it comes from the service, the other side of the wall. It goes down into the gutter and goes up to the motor contact to that disconnect switch, from the disco into the motor contactor, back down, and it comes down here, and these are just coiled up doing nothing. So hitting start stop on here does nothing right now. Then you've got the motor leads in these power blocks. And they could be moved over to the contactor, but right now they're on the VFD. The power also comes from the service, goes down this left-hand conduit here and into the line side of this fuse block. And they are probably blown. Let's well, see. That would be good. Yeah, in th it, theoretically. The question is, what blew them if there was no load? Uh, Popping a 100 amp fuse from a power outage. Unlikely, I agree. Yeah, we've got 475 on the line side of them. Nothing on the output. So the protection for the VFD has popped. And let's see if it's all three legs. Let me check the ground right here. He's popped. He's popped. All three fuses. I can see that the like the the control board, you know, the printed circuit board failing in a soft starter or in a VFD from uh, water getting in here. But how that would cause a short big enough to blow those fuses? That's a little more odd to me. Let me um. It's been a while since this thing has run, yeah? yeah? Let me turn off the power before I go any deeper. Just verify. Yeah, good, okay, we're off. And then I'll just check continuity to ground. That's all good. Continuity 
to each other. Sixty-two thousand ohms. Sixty-three thousand ohms. Sixty-three thousand ohms. Let's take a picture of these fuses. Honestly, one of the first steps is going to be just getting more of these. Is it a possibility they just corrode it? The fuses? Yeah. No. Or the contacts. On the fuses? It's a possibility, but they are very clean. They yeah, they look brand new. And then, um, while well, we got them out, we can just, because I wasn't seeing voltage through them, but just to be sure, yeah, no, these are blown. Something blue, three 100 amp JDL Clash J fuses. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully your drive is okay. It's possible that your drive is not okay. Um... We should meg the motor. Um, I can't meg the drive. That's not a thing. And when the new screen comes, we'll be able to do diagnostics. So at this point, I'll meg the motor, see if he's cool. And then we're just going to wait until the new screen comes. And then we'll change the fuses that day and we'll power it up and see what its diagnostics say and hopefully it works gig giggles giggles of ohms all right we're back we got this vfd cover snapped off uh at the hinges here so with the hinges toast we got to change the whole thing and then in the time it took to get the new cover the display stopped working and the line side fuses for it popped there's a concern that the drive has also failed we'll see here if we can figure it out hopefully drive is still good but I don't know what could have caused those to pop it's unfortunate the clear cover failed put you down there the clear cover failed and then there was a, t a while before uh, the new replacement was ordered and arrived and in that time it looks like rain might have gotten in there so let's just do some voltage checks first before i start touching everything that's off and line side is hot so let's just verify that real quick yeah i got voltage on the line side so let's shut off the service Good. Good. Okay. So yeah, it's going to be a real question whether whether it works. I did meg the motor when I was here last cuz that there was the initial call of the display is broken, or not the display, initial call for broken cover, and then, okay, well, you need a new, um, you need a new cover, and then there was another follow-up call in the first half of this video when I was last here, where um, they had noticed the lights on the display weren't on anymore. But by that point, I think water had already gotten in. I'm feeling a little paranoid. I just want to test this one more time. Good. And the bottom. Good. So by that point, I think maybe water had gotten in or something. So 
So it doesn't look good for the drive. I, there's a strong chance I could put these fuses in and it could just fail. What I should try before I even put in the new fuses or energize it, let's just do some continuity checks and some continuity checks to earth with my meter on what's going into the uh, into the VFD. So line to line, open, 62,000, 63,000, 64,000. Okay, that's not too unusual to me. Try to earth. Open, open, open. Okay, so that makes me feel good. I don't really like just swapping fuses out without checking continuity first because uh, if I can see that there's some kind of short, I'm just going to either pop the fuse or trip the breaker or whatever right away. So it's good to always check. And then here's our bad ones and our new ones, Clash J, JDL. They're identical. Perfect. Those are our old ones with the X's on it. We can pop in the new fuses. There we go. And there we go. All right. Broken hinges. And our old touchpad. blank. We'll save him though. He might be good still. We'll see. And our new touchpad. Now, I don't believe the settings are stored in the HMI, but uh, they could be. So, that's something I'm going to need to check. Let's power it up. What's the worst that could happen? Pop the fuses? Yeah, that's about the worst that could happen. And I'll be on the other side of the wall. It shouldn't run. We've got it in off. And they were just controlling it locally before. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one there. That's a good noise. That's a good sign. Ooh, and it remembered the name of the site. So yeah, I don't think the settings are stored in the touch screen. They must be stored locally inside the, inside the VFD. That's great. Well, that's a good sign. I was worried it would either explode or that it would uh, just be dead quiet and not boot up. But it is booting up. Uh, it makes me confident enough to put the um, cover in. I'll just check the motor protection settings. That's the most important. And then um, we'll just do a quick rotation check. And we can call the operator and confirm whether everything's ready to run or not. But yeah, it's just booting up there. Loading everything for the first time. Let's go ahead and put this new cover on. And so I can go in. And I can look at modified parameters. Love it. So digital input one on delay is three seconds. Off delay is three seconds. Relay output source is running. Frequency ramp set acceleration decel time. Acceleration time is 110 seconds. Decel is 110 seconds. So it is an incredibly maximum current is 105 amps. Service factor amps on this motor 105. Perfect. And what happens if we hit start here? stop because it is overloading so 
it was at maximum current for a few seconds there. Making some strange noises. 105 amps will definitely pop those fuses. I think there was no rotation. I think their motor is just seized up. Let's test that theory. We'll shut off power. Okay. So I should be able to just spin this shaft. Oh my goodness gracious. That is a seized shaft. Uh, the VFD seems all right. Um, got the new cover on and the new HMI on and the new fuses. I'm gonna leave a bunch of, I got a bunch of spare fuses I'll leave in the gutter. Um, when I went to try and just bump the motor and see what's going on, just to rotate it for a second, it kind of pulled max lock rotor amps of about 105 amps. And then I took the little shield cage off the shaft there and tried spinning it with a pipe wrench. And the motor vibrates a little bit, but the pump, I think, is seized. The pump is totally seized. And I guess check this out. So we're able to decouple the motor from the pump. I got the power off right now. Motor spins freely. Pump is seized. And then they had this um, priming port here sealed up. Took that off. Have a look. Pretty rusty. Pretty rusty. Um, but they've elected to have us give them a price to disassemble and rebuild this pump and the uh, bearing adapter, bearing housing there, bearing seal. So that'll be fun. Uh, last time they did it was two years ago apparently, so shouldn't be too bad, right? So yeah, can't get it unseized, so we're going to have to rebuild the thing. We'll get all the parts and a plan and see what we can do. But that's going to take a little while, so for now we'll just leave it like this and come up with a plan. Alright, see you on the next one.